Hello, this is Leela from Miss Leela Pink Journey, and today I'm going to share with you how I have created a couple of cute mug rugs that I purchased the files online for embroidery. They are called mug rugs in the hoop, and I'm having so much fun making them. I had a few gifts that I needed to make, and so I just used this um, magnetic frame that I got when I purchased my machine. The magnetic frame is called the Versatile Magnetic Frame and they are by Baby Lock, I believe. I mean, it came with it. And um, it's a pretty cool frame they come in four by four and five by seven and so you just have to lift up i don't even know if i can do it when i'm on camera you lift up like that in order to remove each of the mag they're very strong the magnets are and it's very secure when you want to hoop something and sometimes like if you're hooping a tote bag or something like that something heavy like a um a book bag or so, sometimes even a jacket. You may not have to use a stabilizer, which is really cool. Saves on that. I got this one from, where did I get it from? Creative Kiwi. And I believe this one came, this one is from Oma's, Oma's Place. So I, I really like both of them. They're really cool. I like the back, I just put two different colors on the back of um, fabric that I had. What I had to have was, um, of course, you know, once you download the actual files from Creative Kiwi or whichever place you get them from, it'll give you the PDF instructions um, on how to complete. So what I had to have is they give you instructions for a 5x7 hoop, 6x10 hoop, or an 8x12 hoop. So I'm making it with the 5x7 hoop that I have here. Um, because the magnetic frames, I really like using them. And I'm kind of using them for almost everything now. So much easier to um, use than my other hoops to me. But the other hoops are not bad either. So we need batting uh, and backing the front, outside, fabric, and a front inner fabric so I have those here I'm going to use a piece of felt for my inside fabric I'm going to just use black fabric for the outside and I'm going to use these two pieces of pretty African print that I have I really love this print I've made a few other um, items with this print and I also have some batting it gives you all the sizes that you need whenever you purchase one of these um, files. So this is going to be my stabilizer that I'm going to use on it. And this is a tearaway stabilizer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will attach my frame, which is really easy. When you are attaching these frames, it, it comes with this F frame for these machines. You remove the regular frame, the A frame that you normally will have on for the other hoops. And then you take this frame with the F frame on there and you ease it under the machine. Usually you put the frames right in the middle, but this one you just ease it under the machine like that. And then you have to find your little opening and slide it right in and make sure that it's into the two little holes in the back. And once you have that in, you can lift up the frames in order to put things in and out. And I just love that. So it makes it so much easier. So I'm just going to put this. <clears throat> I cut my stabilizer, of course, to match whatever size frame I'm using to make sure it's coverage all around the frame, the actual hoop. Is what I should call it. And then I have already put my actual 
USB into my machine because I use, let me see if I can turn around. I use just a cord that I order from Amazon. My USB in out of my machine uh, from the top up here. So, but at the top here, I'm going to hit the home button. And then I will hit, um, I have this in the USB drive. And it's telling me it's not loaded. It must be in number two. There you go. So I have it in, number, in my second USB drive on the machine. And then I'll just press the actual design I want. And after pressing the design, I'll hit set. And of course, I need to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And actually, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller, I believe. I could keep it the same size. Let me check and see what size I cut my actual fabric. Hold on one second. Sometimes I cut my fabric a little smaller because I plan on making things a little smaller. Let's see if I cut it large enough. Just large enough. Okay. So I can make it the actual size. <clears throat> so it's simple. There's not much to do to it now. Except to hit OK. And then I'm going to press um, in edit. And what I want to do is I want to choose the colors. Um, once you hit embroidery, you can start choosing the colors you want to use. I want to match the colors in the actual print. So on my machine, I have a few color stops already in there, but I don't usually use those as much. I have a few colors anchored in there, I should say. So for one, for the placement stitch, it doesn't even matter to me. I'm going to use um, white. It's like an off-white that I have on my machine to place it. Um, I will speed up a bit through this color change, color selection section here. If you're interested in seeing how I've learned to create um, different colors or choose different colors for my threads. Let me know in the comment box and I'll make another video. Like it was a request, it's a gift. And um, these are some young ladies who have gifted me so many beautiful items that I really wanted to try something really nice for them. So I'm learning these mug rugs and I'm having such a blast with them. The first thing that you're supposed to do is start by doing the placement stitch. So I'm going to hit on my machine, lock and start. And then it should be, oh, the placement stitch. Let me stop this for a minute because I can see where I have some threads hanging. And when that happens, you don't want them in the way. You see white thread hanging there, which means it needs to come down. I'm going to have to re-thread it. Re thread. I always it has an automatic threader on it, but my automatic threader got knocked off of alignment the first week I had it, and the shop I purchased from hasn't been helpful. So I have to wait and find me a shop that's going to help me with that automatic threader because it has to get fixed. It's easy to thread. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add these uh, the magnets onto the actual frame. And I've labeled mine just because I wanted to make sure I put them in the right spot without taking all day to get them on there. So this is the upper right and this is the bottom right. So I like to hold this down and I'm making sure that my 
actual stabilizer in, is in there. Hold down the, the front of mine. Pop it down just like that. These suckers, <laughs> they hold on to everything. Here's the bottom left. Let's hold it down and pop it on there like that. And then we have the upper left. Pop it in. It's holding on to my scissors. <laughs> it's a magnet. And then we'll put the next. I was saying you have to be careful which shop you purchase things from. And I'm noticing now more, more places um, are allowing you to order online with this new machine now, which is great. Um, I really like supporting a local shop if they're good. And where I moved from, the shops were awesome. They were amazing. But here, there's only one in the area, and they are not amazing to me. They have places like um, SewingMachinePlus.com. They um, are shipping these out. So, there we have it. It's not hard at all to thread, but, you know, the automatic threader is really great. It is superb. I just need a shop to help me get it fixed. And I will. So, there you have it. I'm going to hit this lock button. Oh, I hate to hit OK. Lock and start. It's going to do the placement box for me. So next I'm going to hit OK and then I will hit um, lock and start so we can do the placement stitch. For my next stitch is um, for the batting, and I'll just lay the batting right across the top of this. It doesn't have to be this huge, actually, but I'm going to lay it right there. And what I like about this machine and this magnetic hoop, actually, is that I don't need to tape anything down because it works pretty well. I'm going to reach across and hit the lock button and start. Okay. I'm just going to make sure it feels everything. I keep a couple of chopsticks around. button. My next step is to, I can cut away the backing. <coughs> so now I have um, cut all around the batting, I removed the excess material from around the batting. I'm just going to go under everything to slide the actual frame back into its place. Nice and tight in there. And I use these scissors that I purchased from uh, Amazon to cut around most of my designs. I have a few scissors here, but these, they work really good. They're nice and sharp and they work good. I'll leave a link below in the description box for where I got these from also. So the next step 
is to place my main frame fabric over the guideline. So that's going to be this beautiful fabric. So I'm just going to lay it right across the top like that. It's so great to not have to tape anything down using these magnetic, the versatile magnetic frames is what they call them. The next step is I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to let the machine know I put the frame back on and I'm going to hit lock and start so we can do the next step. for my next step um, which is this next outline for my inner fabric here I'll show you the picture of it so that's the inner fabric here it's asking for the outline of that and I could take this out of the machine again uh, the actual hoop out and then I could um, cut around where the machine just finished making a stitch but what i've done in the past is i've just placed my fabric right down i have a little piece of felt that i'm going to use so i am going to place my felt fabric down and it's large enough to fit just to just just make it here okay, i am back and i did change my mind about making the felt the inner piece because I did that on this one and it came out beautiful. It's really nice, but I wanted to do a little bit of a change. Um, I have the black letters on this different one that I made. And so I do have a piece of material here that I'm going to change and put in there. So let me go over and put a little best press on this piece of material to iron it out. I have sprayed the actual piece of material with a little of this Mary Ellen's Best Press. Both of these are very good. The Trill Magic is great. Um, it's a liquid fabric stabilizer and also Mary Ellen's Best Press. It's, um, it's called the Clear Starch and Sizing Alternative. The next step here is where you're going to lay your fabric down for the fabric stitch. To stitch the fabric down that's going on top of the actual, um, the inside. It's the inside fabric like I used here. That's going to be this one. The colorful fabric is the one for the outside here. So now we're doing the inside fabric and that's this one. So you want to make sure that the fabric, of course, is large enough to, um, when you stitch around, it's going to actually cover the stitches. Because, of course, you'll need to cut it out. Get you back down to where I'm going to now do the next step, which is going to actually tack down the fabric. Let's see if I can bring you down. Stop dropping things. I'm going to hit the lock button and start stop. And then it should tack down my fabric. Yeah. 
Next, I'm going to actually remove the frame again. So let me hit my button here, slide it out. So that it'll make it where I can reach both of the knobs. And I do want to show you the knob. Let's see if I can do this without making anybody dizzy. But here is the knob. It's really simple. There's a knob right here. This one. And what happens is when I do it with both hands on either side, I lift up this frame and it'll pop right out. It's very simple. And then you just slide it right out. easy to remove so let me remove it slide it out and over and my next step is to grab my scissors either one of these are, are great for that to cut this inner fabric out um, from around and you want to cut it out as close as you can to So now I have cut the fabric from the inner frame on, on the outside of this. I cut that extra fabric and now I'm just going to slide my frame back under. Make sure it's locked in there in both of the actual little knobs on the side and it is. The screen is ready. I can hit OK. And tell me when it's going to move a bit. Hit lock and start. And then it should do those zigzaggy stitches and the pretty stitches and things like that.
it's ready for the back piece, I'm going to have to remove it from the machine and add the back fabric to it. I'm actually not going to remove the frame because what I did in the last one, instead of removing the frame like some of the directions asked, I have placed my fabric right on across the top of each one. So I have this um, black fabric that I'm going to make for the backing. I want the backing to look like this, like two different colors on the back. In order to achieve this, I grab what I've learned from a couple of different instructions I've received, and I just want to make sure I cover the outline there of the thread. I've taken a printed piece and a plain piece, doubled the six by eight inch that it acts for, and I'm just folding them side by side so that it'll be heftier to cover. You'll see how I did this. Plenty of this to cover the stitches here and plenty of this beautiful print to cover this inside stitch. So now it's ready for the last stitch. Hit the lock button and start. Back so I can make sure that it um, covers. Well, I'll put tape down because you can easily put tape down as well. I found it's not totally necessary with these versatile magnetic frames.
showing me here on my app that I only have three minutes left and it's showing exactly where it is actually stitching there, where you see the little crosshair moving, where it's going to go for two minutes left. This little opening shows where I will turn my project inside out once it's finished stitching. I will remove everything and I'll cut all of this excess fabric from outside of the stitches. Here I'm showing where the app will tell me. It's right here with one minute left and then it'll show where it's finished stitching. This portion has been fast forward sped up. The machine does not <laughs> stitch this fast, but it is a thousand stitches per minute. It's finishing up now. shows that it's finished embroidering and it shows that also on my computer screen um, over there on the machine so if I was um, out of range at the store or wherever I had to be out of the office it would show me that it's um, finished embroidering which is really cool the next thing I have to do is Remove it from the hoop. Remove it from the hoop, and I'm going to cut all this extra excess fabric around. And I don't even worry about this because this is going to be cut out of it, and it's going to be turned inside out. I've added a little fray check all around the edges. I am now turning my completed project inside out. Going to poke out the edges as much as possible. I will grab chopsticks in order to poke out the edges to smooth them out without breaking through my stitches. I will take it over to the iron, smooth out the wrinkles, and kind of set my stitches with a little steam. I like that. It came out very nice. I think I could have used more backing on that last fabric piece that I placed in the middle. However, it's still a beautiful project, and I'm sure she'll love the gift. Thanks so much for watching. Here's the back. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment. Ask me a question. I always try to answer as much as possible. Please stay safe and have an amazing week.